make a motion to honor this shadow with the baby. All right. Um, Mr. We have a motion by Commissioner Mathis for um, to hire Miss uh, Shelby Bailey. Is that what you say? Yes, ma'am. I'll second. Okay. We have a second by Commissioner Allen. Is there discussion? Just a question. The court in Charlie. What is your number? Due, um, due, due to qualifications and background. So maybe to put it a little bit better respect to the, the guys and the people that work here to, around the field that we've talked about in these, they would be with Shelly as well. Uh, they talk about the personality that they have to work with. You know, they'll be interfacing with that person all the time. So I would uh, relay the message for my guys that, that they're number one. Um, me, myself, I was torn between two, and Shelby was one of them. And the, uh, I forgot Seager, her name. Robin Seager. Robin. Who has three years of banking experience. Right. And we had uh, seemed to do well with people that come from the bank. We have a handful of work in our office now. Uh, but again, I, I, either one, I think, would be a, a good choice for us. I was impressed with her summary. Very professional. Well, and just to add that the experience is the cash handling experience and the customer service experience because no one in this file has experience doing the billing for a utility company and the billing software. And we, any, any of these probably could have been trained to do it. So um, that, that wasn't the issue, you know, um, None of them were qualified, already knew the system and knew how to do it when they come in here. Anybody who's going to have to be trained to do it. On that particular, on that particular, on that particular, particular software. version, but they, looking at their background with computer experience and mm -hmm. various different things, which would be applicable to learning that field. I know she's uh, worked at the IGA uh, for quite some time, but uh, in high school, did she mention, does she have any, any training at all on, on, on uh, uh, Word or? Um, she said that we asked every, every applicant was asked the same list of questions and it, it was, um, are you familiar with Microsoft Word, Excel, Publisher, and, and they, all, they all said yes. And uh, you all feel she has the temperament to work not only with, with your fellows, but in a close uh, office, close-knit situation like we like we have here in this office, and that uh, she would be able to uh, adapt to uh, government employment, which is somewhat different than private sector. <laughs> it's different. Yeah, it's different. And uh, I'll be able to work with elected officials, which is different than working in the private sector as well. Yeah, we discussed all of that in, in, during the interview. <coughs> it's a high-paced job, and they have to be able to multitask. And, and you've got people that are coming in the office, and your phone's ringing off the hook, and you're entering data in the computer, and, and it can be stressful at times. And mm -hmm. Well, help me a little bit. Does this position carry a six-month or a one-year probationary period? Everything is one year. Everything is one year? Everybody is one year. It, we changed that recently. I think in 16, it was three, I think three months for employees and one year for the police department, but it wasn't clearly outlined in the personnel policy. So we just went one year for everyone. At this point, that can always be yeah. uh, adjusted. Yeah. But we want it and clearly outlined in the personnel policy. No. Well, it, it, it is both the employee and the uh, and in this case, the city an opportunity to look at each other mm -hmm. and just 
you know, to make a good assessment. That gives plenty of time to make a good assessment to see if that person's going to be suited for that particular position. Okay, then. Is there any further discussion? Any further discussion? Okay, then I'm going to call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed? Okay, and then that motion carries. <coughs> for Ms. Shelby Bateman. All right then. And then now we'll move on to something that we'll probably have a little longer discussion. Um, discussion of possible action concerning election matters. And um, <coughs> we first discussed this back on July 26. Ms. Uh, Heather Riley came and gave us a very comprehensive presentation. And she answered our questions. Um, Commissioner Millinder and Commissioner Walden and I attended that uh, meeting. And then on uh, August the 2nd, uh, we discussed it again. And we had a full lengthy discussion about this and reviewed the options, which Ms. Keisha just passed out to Ms. Ms. Heather's um, presentation again, in case you all didn't have it at home um, or misplaced it. Thank you, Mr. Charlie. Thank you. Yes. Um, so she's, she gave us several, five options, and uh, if you want to, we can review those options again or discuss or ask questions about it, ask Mr. Hartman questions, ask Ms. Keisha questions. Um, it, it, the the uh, video is online. You could have taken a look at that for a refresher. Um, so um, we, I just asked for this to be on the agenda so we can have some further discussion, decide how we want, if we want to move forward with it, if we're interested in, in this approach. Uh, we have discussed that uh, um, there are basically two viable options uh, if, if we uh, move the elections to coincide with County elections, option three, where the city clerk would continue to conduct uh, candidate qualifying, submission of candidate names to the supervisor of elections office, continue to collect candidate financial statements. And otherwise, the supervisor of election would do all city canvassing, post-election audits, and the responsibilities would be split between the city clerk and the supervisor of elections office. And this would cost the city absolutely nothing. Uh, option five, uh, the supervisor of the elections office would manage everything, including the qualifying, submitting of candidates' names, and accepting the candidates' financial statements. And the city would pay a fee of six to eight hundred dollars to the supervisor of the elections office for uh, handling the um, qualifying and those things I just named. Uh, that would save approximately $5,000 at today's rates. And I say at today's rates because Looking back through my multitude of paperwork, I found a printout here where uh, Miranda gave me back <coughs> uh, the election, the 2013 election, cost the city $3,774. Oh, and then $3,774. That's because they didn't have the annex back then, and now they have uh, early vote here, and we have to pay part of that cost. Mm -hmm. And so now it's $5,475. I think that's a big part of it. Because um, we never had early voting for city elections. And she did talk about, you know, if we, if we eliminated early voting, that would save us some money. Um, yeah, that was option two. That would save us about $1,800. So, um, you know, uh, I, I, um, I don't know what else to say except to review some of these things that we've already talked about. I do want to, uh, when we talked about this at uh, the February, excuse me, the August 2nd meeting, um, Commissioner Allen did comment that uh, you felt like it would be possible, there would be a possibility that uh, we would lose our home rule or that the county would take over our home rule on this. And this really is, would be a, an agreement with the uh, supervisor of elections and not, not the Franklin County Board of County Commissioners. And you did uh, mention about uh, uh, the Restore Act. Well, the Restore Act is a, is a um, it's, um, 
the home rule is by Florida state legislation, not federal legislation. And the Restore Act is federal le legislation, and they appointed the U.S. Treasury to write up the rules and guidelines. And the U.S. Treasury uh, referred to coastal political subdivision, which is a completely different definition than what the state of Florida defines coastal political subdivision. So the county could not go by the state of Florida definition. They had to go by the U.S. Treasury definition. So the county did not on purpose uh, take away our home rule on that. And there was a lot of discussion and, and uh, the attorneys were all mixed up in it and uh, that's how it, how it came out. And then um, I, uh, Mr. Hartman also talked about, he felt like maybe that our forefathers uh, scheduled the elections at this time to, um, I'm gonna try to be tactful, so that uh, we couldn't, uh, we could not uh, get our budget, have agenda budgets, uh, budget agendas, and get those passed um, easily. Um, but I don't agree with that. Uh, elections are held every two years. Our budgets have to be done every year, and the city commission retains the option to um, amend the budget at any given time throughout the year. So if, if uh, a group of commissioners were trying to, had an agenda that they were trying to pass through on a budget, if, if um, we had a new group of commissioners elected in November at the general election, and they didn't like that budget, they could certainly amend it in, the, in, in any time during the year. So um, that's, that's my rebut to those two uh, comments that were made at the August 2nd meeting. So uh, I think this would be a cost savings for the city. Uh, it would be, um, the timing would be better. It wouldn't be during the budget season. It would reduce staff workload um, and we might have a possible better turnout. So that's enough for me. Does anyone else have a comment? Thank you. Uh, sorry. All I want to do is reiterate uh, what I had said in the meeting, meetings prior, which uh, uh, the mayor just stated what I had stated in the meeting prior. And I'll actually make a motion that we proceed to go forward with uh, adjusting and changing uh, to the option that uh, turns our election process over to the Supervisor of elections in this county. Is, is that five? Excuse me. Which option number? I did. I don't. I don't. Not looking at it right oh. now, Keisha. It's the option that turns the process over to the supervisor of election in its entirety and takes our staff out of it. Now the attorney. Probably don't want to speak, but that's 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 my favorite. I think there's too many positives to this to uh, to not do it. That's just my favorite. My, my comment would be related to. Um, Should we have discussion for? I mean, <clears throat> a second and discussion. Yes. Okay. So first, I want to make sure I have the uh, we have we understand the motion. Okay. Okay, so I, I just wrote, uh, proceed to go forward with adjusting and changing, uh, turning to turn the process over to the Supervisor of Elections Office in its entirety uh, uh, that, uh, and take staff out. Correct. Okay. For all the reasons that's been stated by various members, you included, you just stated mm -hmm. some of those, and which was my feeling at the, our workshop, and I stated those ones for both. Okay, so we have that motion by Commissioner Hellinger. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a second by Commissioner Walton. And so now we have discussion. Uh, Mr. I, I think your research was very accurate on, on the status of the home rule and the coastal political subdivisions. And we labored 
extensively with the county in those days about that issue, including Dan and Pat Floyd over in Appalachia. And there were some other things dealing with the consortium that came in along with that too. Because um, our county had not signed to join the consortium. And as such, the consortium didn't exist until it, it didn't become an entity until all eight counties had done it. And we attended the meeting where um, we had asked to be a part of the consortium. And um, it, I think it didn't get a second, did it? And uh, so, so anyway, but uh, with that in mind, I, I still feel like we, we need to protect my position is to hold it here at the best price in uh, number two. Okay. So, I mean, we're not voting on that, we're voting on your motion. Motion is successful, then I'll let me tell everybody where the state of the law is. So I have no comment before the vote. No, I don't want to, I mean, it doesn't okay. affect the. All right, the then I would want to ask uh, during discussion, it, it, you know, if it uh, is approved, how how would we, the, inter the terms would have to be adjusted. Right, okay, and, that, and okay. That's, that, that is what I was about to okay. comment on is, if it's approved, the terms be adjusted. I had, I had a long conversation earlier with Commissioner Miller on this, and I, I had not refreshed my memory looking at Attorney General's opinions and the statute. Mm -hmm. The state of the law is this, that um, relatively recently in 2003, the Attorney General issued an opinion 2003-52, City of Lardale Lakes, wanted to do this exact thing. They moved the date from March to November to coincide with federal, state, and county elections. And they extended the terms of city commissioners. And all this was done by ordinance. So what we would be talking about doing, I believe, is, ex well, I don't try to think. Um, this, the county elections take place on an even years. Correct. Ours take place on odd. Um, we have two commissioners and the mayor commissioner coming up in 2019. Mm -hmm. So we have to decide which direction we adjust. We can adjust um, forwards or backwards, it looks like. We can reduce or extend commissioners. Uh, contrary to my conversation with Commissioner <laughs> earlier today, uh, I, I, I had told him, I said, I don't, I think extending them, there's an issue with that. Apparently there is not. Certainly there is not for a March to November extension. Don't say for the day as well because we, our election is usually in September. September. Yeah. And well, we can't set up a meeting. It'll go to no, it'll go to August and September. But up the next year. I mean year. August and November. For, that'll I'm be sorry. another year. Yeah. But yeah. it can't be. I mean we can't do it right now. <coughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm talking no, about right. for the future. Yeah. Right. We, we would have to. We would. Have we would pass an ordinance right. to, the, uh -huh. to the effect of of how this would be implemented. I mean, we'd say we're turning, and I'll use um, her terminology on how we're turning it over to the county, and then there'd be an explanatory section in the ordinance explaining exactly how we're sorting out the, uh, the terms, and then we'll have everybody look at that and figure it out if it, if it passes, because it's a little bit of a break here. Okay, so, all right, so there's an election, a city election in 2019, and then there's a county election in 2020. Then there's a city election in 2021 and a county in 2022. Correct. So the the folks that are up for election on this board in 2019, they would not be up for election until 2020. That's one option. And then the folks that are up, up for election in 2021, they would not be up for election until 2022. That would be a straightforward way extend everybody one year currently into to November or or whatever the county election date is. In well, the, 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 option of the, the primary is in August and then the general is in November. Uh -huh. and we don't have primaries. We also have primaries. Yeah. So. Well, we're all at large. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So November everybody be moved to November. Correct. November of the, of the <coughs> upcoming year. 
So it would extend, extend everyone, that, that option would extend everyone's term one year? Or if we go the other way and come back this way, it would extend everyone by a year and a you know, And, and a couple of months. months. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Commissioner Allen? In the next election. I said that would move us back a year, so. How would that, how would Well, that was what we talked about. Get me out of here earlier. Uh, just resign. <laughs> <laughs> then we would be handling our own next couple. And all of us. Uh, no, but how, how, how would we go backwards? He just said that. Oh. No, that's what they're going to work Now, now if Wolf said you go to an even year, we could either move it back or. It, well, did you say that? Yes, this, this is the thing. This is, this is the thing that makes me, obviously, well, um, in reading some old case law things or reading, is that. Obviously, there's a, um, well, I would say obviously, is, I would think it would be a little too cute for people sitting in office to extend their terms by their own vote, uh, by through ordinance, by a significant length of time, mm -hmm. right? Just because that's not the nature of the democracy here, whatever. But that's, I don't want to let my, you know, I got to follow what the statute says, what the law says. Right. We are in uncharted territory. There, there's no, the, the longest, and then these folks did extend their terms from March to November of, a, of the same year. Mm -hmm. So they extended in July, August, September, October. So they extended seven months. Seven months. And it was deemed by ordinance, deemed to be, and obviously the ordinances be advertised and the public can come in and right, say their piece on it. Mm -hmm. So that's all part of the process. Um, we'd be talking about a year and two months, so an additional five months on top of what is very well established, but that's the principle. So we'd be just extending that principle if we're extending terms. And what the mayor just described is probably the most straightforward approach, easily described approach, an approach people can understand just by basically mm -hmm. saying, hey, everybody that's in your office now is going to have an extra year um, and two months on their term. And that's what we have an ordinance coming from the Commissioner vote on, if you have an issue with it, come to me, come talk to your commissioners, whatever else. Because I think shortening terms, which would seem, you know, because all it talks about is adjusting terms, right? And just in the examples given of a practical application, they've extended the adjustments then to extend the terms. Adjustment can also be reducing terms, but I think that ends up jamming us up as far as conducting our own. I gotta look at it, but conducting our own election, at least one more, five times two more, to get them. Yeah, let me see. So we got staggered too. We got our staggered elections. If we back it up, we can't back up this one. Right. So because we, it's already too late. It's happening yeah. uh, next right. week or week yeah. after. Yeah. We can't back this one. That's yeah. right. And, and then what we do if we extend the current one, and that happens, and we back up. Mine and cows, so to speak, then it's going to put all the commissioners and the mayor at the same yeah. time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't want that. Yeah. We have to, we have to conduct Or, or you elections. could run for a six year term. I don't think we can do that because the terms <laughs> are in the chart. The four year terms are in the chart. And Cal yeah, said that we need a referendum. special terms if somebody quits. But it's to fulfill a four year term. Yeah. You, you said, got to get your well, terms. Yeah, right. Right. You've done it for shorter terms. Yeah. Right. Shorter remainder of terms. We've done it that way. Yeah. Here's what we're looking at. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry, sorry Cap. What we're looking at is terms and not people, just terms. And we've right. got to get the terms coordinated. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and the mayor's first here. here. That is the. Okay. Here, here's a scenario that scares me. Tamara should get on the county. And we end up running both at the same time putting out signs for both of us. <laughs> just be pandemonium gone to see. Well <laughs> that's it's a I'm just I don't I don't think all know me well enough. I think all know me well enough that I'm not being serious about that. I know that <laughs> if if you have any problem with that I can Black like, men don't put enough signs. <laughs> there you go. That's what I do. Okay. Uh, All right. That's enough. <laughs> but, but I think 
think that's a subsequent okay. ordinance. I think, I think what, we're, what we're, we're talking about is if you all vote to approve to turn over to the county, and then the, then the second thing we discuss is what we're discussing now. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, now, okay, now, if there was an order, so it would have to be approved by, we're, we are just, uh, the motion is only to proceed uh, with turning the process over. Right. We'll have to have ordinance, it'll have to be advertised. I think it should be advertised, put it in the paper even, so that the public sure. can say, I didn't know, maybe send it out by the FO, the EOC, <laughs> whatever it takes so the public can't say we, it didn't know. Yes. number four. We, and if they have their opportunity to come and voice their opinion because the, the public may not want the terms extended no matter what the cost savings is. That's right. And, and that's something that we, we certainly need to take into consideration. Option four, leaving the date as is, the election office managing the entire and pre-election and post -election. Anyway. Option four would not be a, a cost savings, but it would take uh, the um, it would take the uh, elections out of the hands of the city, but it would still cost us the same amount of money as it has been. But if you if you look at it over ten years, twenty years, it, it begins to save a, a, a chunk of money. And it's not to say that. Um, if we don't, if the commissioners in the future don't like it, the uh, ordinance can be amended. Is that correct, Mr. Hartman? That's correct. Okay. And then also, if um, we decide we don't want to turn the, you know, we do it. The commission does it a couple of years, and uh, for the all of the all of the duties turned over to the supervisor of the election, and the commission decides well, and the clerk the clerk can handle some duties to save additional money, not pay the additional six to eight hundred dollars, that can be handled administratively. Is that correct? You said that before, um, that the terms, not to not to uh, change the election date, but just change the option, the option choice. I mean, but that is the way I remember it also. So okay. they let us move among those things yes. freely. Mm -hmm. Is there any other discussion? Okay, so we have that motion by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Walden. Uh, no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. And so we have uh, all in favor, Commissioner Allen opposes, uh, and that motion carries. And we are in an uncharted waters. So we'll just see what the uh, public says and we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, item four. Discussion of possible action concerning job descriptions. And uh, this, uh, I have requested this to be placed on the agenda because um, this is why we held a special meeting in the first place was for, these, for this item. And we never voted to remove it from the agenda. So it, it's on and we can have a report from Tony on what's going on. Sure. Okay. Mayor, I'd let me give a quick. Sweet Commissioner Miller. No, I'm sorry. Tony's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me give a quick report. I mean, naturally, everybody's been dealing with the storm. We postponed. We canceled the uh, last scheduled meeting. We tried to reschedule. Still, things were busy. It's, you know, it's ongoing with everybody's recovery. And so we haven't been able to take action and do the final review on that last PD position description. And I talked to Mr. Tom extensively and we would like the committee would like to review that one more time before it's sent to you guys and uh, I'm gonna get with Courtney she and I briefly talked about it yesterday and things are still busy and hectic for staff and especially with the new city hall everything going on I'm gonna talk with her about possibly the HR meeting call HR committee calling a meeting next Tuesday mm -hmm. and if we are able to do that and it come together and we're able to review it and send it on to you folks if you want to uh, handle it at the regular city commission meeting last Thursday night on the consent agenda. We'll see what happens if we can have a meeting on Tuesday. I know Tom's not available next Thursday and Friday, but I've got to get Courtney and see if she's available and the other members possibly on Tuesday. So that's where we are. Okay, that's fine. It's not the 31st, I think. 30th, I think. It's Tuesday. Because Tom can't be Thursday and Friday, and I can't be Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday's not, I mean, Monday and Wednesday, oh, Tuesday's the only day I have. 
So. And, and that's that's good. That's a good plan. Um, and if it doesn't work out, don't get stressed over it. Maybe you can meet in November sometime, and we'll we'll, we'll uh, address it in in uh, December at the December meeting. Right. Whatever works out for staff and the HR committee, we're going to try to have another meeting. Okay. So. All right. That's that's good. And uh, um, thank you for the report. And then uh, should we uh, go in, we don't need a motion. Uh, that, that report is sufficient and we'll put it on the agenda whenever you all are ready for the next go round. Okay? Okay. Yes, ma'am. I, um, I have a question. We are fixing to start billing. Uh, print bills for the water department. There were several homes that they're, during the storm, their um, pipes busted underneath their house, like in Landart, the ones on Steels. Oh. Mm -hmm. And we just didn't want to make any adjustments without asking you guys first. So I just wanted to let you know that um, we was wanting to see if y'all wanted to credit back and give them an average water use because of the storm. It did. Um, our guys turned off probably 30 of them. At, right after the storm passed through, and they were just, it was in, it was draining our water tower. Uh -huh. And because it was just spewing out and the people weren't home. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, and then we had other residents that just, you know, <coughs> had pipes burst because of the storm. Uh -huh. uh, about how many did you have, do you know? I want to say there's probably about 30 uh -huh. of them. And you also um, um, didn't collect, I mean, the offices were closed or you weren't open for normal payments. You were trying to regroup the no power, mm -hmm. so you didn't charge late fees. fees. Right. Okay. And that was fine uh, also. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion okay. that to to, uh, to take the staff's recommendation and, and uh, make adjustments on those homes that were storm damaged and uh, they have water issues to do the adjustment average billing just as described to do that for the customers, that's beyond their control. Mm -hmm. So I get that motion. Okay. Okay, we have that motion by Commissioner Millender to uh, make the adjustment on the storm damaged homes that uh, lost water, and we have that uh, second by Commissioner Mathis. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, aye. Any opposed? Then that motion carries. Okay, then is there anything else from the staff member or commissioners at this time, Mr. Hartman? No. Okay, all right, the public? Okay, then.